in the killing of the Levines than Nathaniel Ferris. That question mark on his neck stands for, am I gonna snitch you out or not? Perry and his father are immediately charged with conspiracy to commit murder. There were a lot of people that wondered, didn't this lawyer know that he shouldn't be talking to people in the jail? Well, most people initially didn't believe it because you just had this tremendous feeling, almost incredulous, there's no way he's that stupid. And then, of course, when you heard the tapes, you realized that, yes, he is. After a decade-long game of cat and mouse, investigators finally had their claws into Perry March and his father. And now they believed that if they could squeeze Arthur even tighter, they might finally be able to solve the mystery of what happened to Janet March. Ferris calls Arthur March in Mexico and pretends that he's killed the Levines. Yeah, but you finished the job up there? Yeah, that's done. Everything's done. I'm in Houston right now, and I will be in Guadalajara at about 2.30. So Arthur drives to the airport in Guadalajara. And the FBI has followed him from his home to the airport. And an FBI agent walks up to him and says, are you Arthur March? And he says, yes. Initially, he denies his reasons for being there, and then he subsequently admits that he's there to pick up a guy named Bobby Gibbons. FBI agents arrest Arthur and take him back to Nashville. As soon as Arthur March gets taken into custody, uh, the case starts unraveling very quickly because at this point, police and prosecutors believe that Arthur March had played some type of a role in the disappearance of Janet March. Once prosecutors play the Farris tapes for Arthur, he knows he's in hot water. Facing seven to 10 years in prison, he's offered a deal. He agrees to plead guilty and do 18 months, but the stipulation is he's gotta be cooperative with us in terms of the homicide investigation. State your name for the record, please, sir. Arthur Wayne March. <clears throat> How old are you? 78. Apparently, Arthur March was as sterling a character as his son. To save his own skin, he turned on Perry and started talking. What he was about to reveal would really cook his son's goose. Did your son ask you to to do something for him, to assist him in, in a matter. He asked me to help uh, dispose of Janet's body. According to Arthur, Perry and Janet had an argument that escalated into a fight, which resulted in her dead. He never mentioned that he killed her. Never. He used the term accident. And maybe Arthur believed him, maybe he didn't, but Arthur fancies himself as the fixer. He's one who could fix situations like this. And Arthur loved his son, but he didn't think him entirely capable. Arthur was the kind of guy to say, you know, Perry, you can't do anything right. I mean, you hid the body where? Arthur tells police that Perry hid Janet's body in a wooded area near their house. But the land was about to be developed, so Perry asked his father to help him move the remains. Perry describes for Arthur where the body will be, tells him how many paces it is off the road, drives him to the spot. Did you follow his instructions? Yes. Were you able to find this with no problem? If you believe Arthur March, it is the first hard evidence in the whole case. They don't have a body, but he gives them the next best thing. He says, I saw the body. Tell me Perry and I, he opened the trunk. Perry grabbed one end and I grabbed the other and we lifted it into the trunk. Arthur tells the police that he and his son took Janet March's body up to Kentucky. They check into a hotel and Perry stays in the hotel and Arthur is supposed to go off and by himself get rid of this body. Perry laid down, he said he was very tired, he gave me the keys to the car, and I went back and got in the car, went back up to the highway. So he's looking for a place to bury this body in a stream and can't find a place deep enough. When he sees land being cleared. And it 
it was just getting light. And I drove up, pulled over to the side of the road, and there was a big pile of brush. He said it made sense to him to put her body in the brush pile because it looked like the type of brush pile that she would burn. So I cleared away three, three, you might say like there were holes, I think. And in the first one, I put the clothes that was in there on the top. And then in the next hole, I put Janet, I flipped up the, the body. Arthur agrees to take detectives to the spot where he disposed of Janet's remains. They search the area extensively, but come up empty. What was your purpose in putting the bag in that crush pot? To have it burned and it would be cremated and there would be no bond. Though police don't have any physical evidence to corroborate Arthur's account, they're convinced he's telling the truth. Arthur's story had points of it that were almost so incredible that they had to be true. Because who would make this up? And we covered it with Arthur many, many times, and he never deviated, he never changed his story. And I'm going to say this, when it comes to getting rid of bodies, I think Arthur March is probably the world's leading expert. I mean, I don't think anybody can argue that he didn't do a fine job getting rid of the body. Why did you agree to help your son get rid of Jeff March's body? It's my son. By this point, Perry probably wished he'd worked alone. But then again, Arthur did such a good job of cleaning up the prosecution still didn't have a shred of physical evidence to bring into court. Most of Nashville was convinced that Perry had blood on his hands, but how this trial would turn out was anyone's guess. He was afraid Janet was going to divorce him and take his children from him. What was the crime that the discussion was brought up about? for me to murder the Levines. Whose idea was it? It was Perry's idea. The state star witness, Arthur March, is too ill to attend the trial, but his videotaped confession grips the courtroom. When Arthur admitted that he actually disposed of the body, it was maybe the mystery has been solved. As the evidence against Perry steadily mounts, his behavior surprises the courtroom. He came off as arrogant, patronizing, condescending. I choose not to testify. And that didn't play well. After seven long days of testimony, the case goes to the jury. All right, if you would stand, please, through there and announce the verdict on behalf of the jury. We, the jury, find the defendant, Perry Avram March, as to count one, guilty of second-degree murder. As to count two, guilty of abuse of a corpse. As to count three, guilty of tampering with evidence. I would like to express our profound gratitude to the many people in the Nashville community who gave support to us in our pursuit of justice for our daughter and for our grandchildren. That's all we have to say. I think they had a passion that some justice could be done for Janet, and when they had a resolve about them, that you know, they were going to see it through. Can I give you a hug now? <laughs> <laughs> March is sentenced to 56 years in state prison. Arthur March's plea deal of 18 months is thrown out by a federal judge who sentences him to five years. But just four months into his sentence, Arthur dies at the age of 79. In its wake, this case has left victim upon victim upon victim. More than Janet Levine died in August of 96. I think the theme of this old case was that all the tragedies of the people involved, the, all the lives that were impacted by this action uh, of Perry March. Perry March thought he was smarter than everybody else. And I think in so believing that is what led to his downfall. He had a great chance of beating this if he had just kept his mouth shut. He arrested bitter defeat from the jowls of utter victory. And that takes some doing. 
from prison, Perry is still making trouble. Not only has he filed a petition about the size of his jail cell, he's suing to have his children removed from the Levine's care and sent to live with his second wife in Mexico. Some people have no shame. For Court TV, I'm Dominic Dunn.